Good afternoon. I'm Andrew and I'm joined by my colleagues, Rebecca and Caitlin. Today, we're introducing you to our online newspapers and magazines. So if you're watching this live, you can ask questions via the Slido forum link just below this window. So newspapers and magazines are an amazing source of information. They record and analyze events, both big and small, as they unfold. On your behalf, our library subscribes to vast online databases of newspapers and magazines that run from the distant past right up to today. And they're all available wherever you are. So you can access those magazines merely by uh, going to the um, link on our, the front page of our webpage, just to become a member link. You can see that there on your screen and that'll take you about 30 seconds to join the library. If you're watching this from interstate, you, your own state library will have a similar service as will the National Library. So we subscribe to a large and diverse range of magazines, ranging from cars to cooking, from arts to wildlife and lots of subjects in between. And newspapers also are a wonderful source of the daily record of the world and our lives. Almost everybody has appeared in a daily newspaper, or if you haven't, somebody you know will have appeared in a daily newspaper. So through us, you can explore the news of today. That's today's Washington Post or the most recent edition of the Washington Post. You can find fascinating accounts from stories from yesterday. This is Tutankhamun's treasures uh, unveiled in 1923 as uh, reported in the Illustrated London News. You can also look at how large events unfolded. This is the declaration of war from the Manchester Courier on August the 5th, 1914. And you can see small personal events as well. So this is a birth notice from 1810 from Jackson's Oxford Journal. And it's actually a birth notice for Augustus Tolk, who later emigrated to Australia and became our first state librarian. So on that note, let's go to current newspapers and I'll pass over to Rebecca. Thanks very much, Andrew. Yes, so do you want to look at today's latest newspaper, both from Australia and around the world, and also magazines from around the world? Well, that's what I'm going to be featuring first of all, looking at a couple of different options out of our many databases. So first of all, if you go from our home page and just move under the search and discover menu, go down to A to Z databases, and then from that page, you can then select from the all subjects menu using the drop down arrow and navigate down to newspapers current. And you'll see 19 databases that we've got under that particular category. The ones in yellow are the recommended ones. And these are all ones that you can access from home as Andrew said, once you're registered with us as a Victorian member of the library. So the first one we're going to be featuring is for Australian and, and indeed a Victorian newspaper, which is the Age and Sydney Morning Herald Digital Edition. So I will click on that. If you're doing this from home and you click on it, it will ask you to log in with your R code and your name. And you just log in there and it will take you into the Age right here and you can see along the top here immediately that it goes by default to the current year 2020 and back to 2006. In the current year, you're currently in January, you just click on June and then from there you can roll down and click on the 18th of June which is today's date and there you've got today's paper showing up. You can use the arrow on the side here to click through the pages Alternatively, you can click on the sections option up here. This will allow you to click on a particular section. For example, I want to look at the arts page. I'll click on there and you can see the arts page on the right here. If I now click on that page, it will magnify it. And I can also use the plus sign up here to magnify it more. The other way of looking at the paper as well for any of the days that you're looking at is to use the thumbnails option up here. This will allow you to just scroll down the page and then pick the page you want to look at there. And then another thing that you can do is you can, having gone back to this page here, where you can see up the top here, all of those years listed, you could either click on the particular year and date that you want to go to, or you can use the search option up here 
to look for a particular subject that you're interested in out of all of those years or specify which years you're interested in. So I'll just click on search now and I'll just try out one brief search here. So I'm going to put in a search here for Michelle Payne, who was, as you might remember, the first female jockey to win the Melbourne Cup. I'll click on search down here and then the results will appear down here on the left hand side or in the middle. And I'll click on this article here and there I can read the article about Michelle Payne. And one final thing that you can do if you go back to that page listing the results, you can actually add them to your collection here. And then up the top here, you can click on my collection and see all of the results that you've saved there and view them all at once. And in addition, you can actually email them using this button up here. So that's a quick look at the age. Now, going back to the menu that we came in at, just back here, we're now going to have a look at some magazines and newspapers under another database. I'll just go back out of here. And it's not quite doing what I wanted it to do there. So going from the menu we went to previously, here's one I prepared earlier, which is known as press display. And when I click the conditions of access button there, it should appear here. Press reader rather, change its name. And I'll just get rid of this screen here. And you can see on the left hand side here, you can look under countries, languages, categories, as in subjects there, and also publication types, which is whether or not it's a newspaper or a magazine. In terms of countries, this database is wonderful. It covers 97 different countries. And, and also, um, in 63 different languages. So if we just go into countries up here, I'll just navigate down here and click on France, for example, which has 432 publications altogether. And there you've got them appearing on the right hand side. So currently we've got both newspapers and magazines appearing. So you can see there Le Figaro, which is one of the more well known uh, French newspapers. And as with the um, age database, you can actually scroll through that way. Or you can also click to view it in um, a text view version. And that might be easier for some people to read it that way and scroll through that way. Just go back to the page version. Um, but just going back to this page here, you can also have a look at um, magazines from France. So I'll just get back to this page there. And here are some of the magazines appearing. So for example, if I look at Marie Claire, I could just click on that and open up Marie Claire and have a look through there. And there's lots of other magazines that are listed there. But finally, um, another thing you could do is just under going back to the main publications list, you could go in, in under a particular subject and look at magazines from all around the world all at once. So I'm going to have a look at history and science. There's 315 of them there. And you'll see under languages that in actual fact they're in all these different languages. So I'll just have a look at the English ones. And there we've got a rather enticing looking history magazine. So I'll just go into history. And one of the great features that you can do here is um, on the menu there, you can actually click and there's an actual link to the page that you want to go to. So it will take there automatically. Um, or you can also use this bar down the bottom here to just pick what page you want to go to that way. So having briefly demonstrated Press Reader and having finally had a look at history, I'm going to now hand over to Caitlin, who's going to talk to you about historical papers. Excellent. So, Thanks for that, yeah. Rebecca. Let me just open up my screen here. Okay. 
So I'm going to show you about our um, historical newspaper and magazine archives. Um, so this can be really useful maybe if you're performing historical research um, or if you're a student who's writing an assignment on a historical figure or a period of time um, or maybe if you just have a really keen interest in a topic or event and you want to read articles about it uh, for your leisure, you might be interested in our newspaper or magazine archives. So I'm back here at the A to Z database page that Rebecca showed you earlier. Um, and I'm going to do the same subject filter search, except I'm going to filter it by newspapers historic. So we have lots of um, historical archives here from different countries all around the world. Uh, you'll see newspapers from the UK and Ireland, from America and Canada, China, India, New Zealand. But let's say you're just looking for Australian newspapers. We'll start there. Um, at the top here in our recommended box, you'll see Trove. So I'll just open up Trove so you can see it. So Trove is a really popular website. Um, you may have seen this already. You don't need to be a member of the State Library to access Trove. It's free to everyone. Um, Trove is uh, run by the National Library of Australia and it has a really a strong collection of digitised newspapers from Australia, um, generally up to 1954, and that's when copyright uh, ends. There are some newer uh, newspapers there though as well, which have been digitised uh, with permission from the publisher. Uh, so some notable uh, more recent newspapers that you can find there are the Canberra Times, um, the Chaser, and down the bottom here, you'll see the Women's Weekly Archive, which is from 1933 to 1982. Um, that's a really great archive of a historic and iconic Australian women's magazine. But we'll go back to our databases now, um, and I'll show you one of the really popular international newspaper archives that we have. I'm just going to perform a little keyword search here for the times. And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see here we've got the Times Digital Archive. So that's one of our uh, databases. You'll be asked to sign in as a member. I've already signed in for you, so here we go. Um, so as you can see, this goes all the way back to 1785. That's a really, um, really wide coverage. Um, and this is really great if, you, uh, if you're um, interested in a particular event and the way that it was covered at the time. Um, so it's a really good um, primary uh, source for your research. Uh, I've, I know a lot of friends who have a lot of interest in the Titanic, so I'm going to do a little search on that now. Me coming up near the top. Let's have a quick search. Okay, so here you go. Here we've, we've got just the, the preliminary results. You can see a lot of them are from April 1912. So that's just days after the event happened. So that's real time reporting of, of what happened. Uh, we can also filter our results. So you can filter by the section of the newspaper that the article appeared in. So perhaps you want to see editorials. Uh, you can filter by the document type. Um, so you can uh, filter by obituaries that may mention the disaster, which is pretty interesting. Um, you can, of course, filter by publication date, um, by a particular journalist who you might be interested in, or by a person who's mentioned. So that's the Times Digital Archive. Really great. But perhaps you're not interested in newspapers at all. Maybe you are interested in magazines. So let's have a look at what magazines we have here. I'm going to do a database search for magazine. And you can see we've got 18 databases that are popping up. Some of the really notable ones that we have, which you might not realize we have, are the National Geographic Archive. Um, and also further down, we have the Country Life Archives. So that's a, a weekly British culture and lifestyle magazine. And we also have some fashion magazines. So we have Harper's Bazaar and Vogue. 
So I'll have a quick look at the National Geographic. So this is a really great archive. It's really user friendly. Um, you can see it's got some spotlights of some of the really old National Ge Geographic magazines. Um, you can see it, it spans back to 1888. So if you're one of those people that's been collecting National Geographic for the past 30 years, maybe you wanna see some from 100 years ago and you can do that here. So I'm gonna show you the browse magazines function, which is this second tab. And when that opens up, we've got thumbnails here of every edition from 1994 all the way back to 1888. So I have already preloaded. This is the magazine from the month I was born. And you can just scroll through that like you would um, if it was a real magazine. It takes a little while to load. There you go. So that's all the ads, all the articles and everything. Um, so one last one, I'll show you a bit of the Harper's Bazaar archive. So this is good if you just happen to really like Harper's Bazaar. And again, you want to look through some old editions. Um, the website looks a little bit different to the National Geographic. So if you wanted to browse by a specific edition, um, I'd go into this publications tab here and you'll be able to um, uh, go through to a specific uh, year and month. Uh, but this website's really well set up if you're looking for a specific thing. Um, so maybe you're a fashion and design student or you just really like a, a particular um, designer. Uh, I'm going to do a quick search here. Or, oh, oof. I don't know what happened there. I'm just going to do a quick search for Victor and Rolf, the fashion house. Great. So one of the things that's quite good about this archive is that it show, brings up everything and that includes the ads. So if you wanted to have a look at how those ads have changed over time, you can do that. If you don't want to see the ads, I would recommend this little hack, just oops, not advertisement. And that will um, remove all of these listings that have advertisement in them. And there we go. So here are some pretty interesting articles in the Harper's Bazaar that mention Victor and Rolf. Um, and you can flip through those. They'll be in full colour, exactly as they appeared in the original magazine. There we go. Great. So now I'm going to hand back to Andrew, uh, who's going to show you how you can uh, search across multiple magazines and newspapers at once. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Caitlin. That was really great. So let's have a look at our website again. And what we're going to do now is we're going to search not just through one magazine or journal, but across a wide range of them. So we can do a search across uh, a lot of our subscription databases at one time. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for some newspaper articles uh, for uh, about the State Library's beautiful domed reading room, which was refurbished about 15 or 20 years ago. Um, so I'm just putting in a couple of keywords here and there's no sort of right or wrong way with that. The thing to remember is that you are searching across a massive amount of information. So with your keywords, I would be fairly specific with those because you want to actually cut out a lot of irrelevant articles. But there's a point where you don't want to be too specific because you also don't want to miss too many of the relevant articles. So I'm putting in a few keywords. I can always change that search if I'm not getting what I'm after. And the important thing here is this drop down box, which gives me various options. One of the options you'll notice is journals and newspaper titles. That is just for, as it says, titles of newspapers and journals. So if I was looking to find National Geographic or the Sydney Morning Herald, I might put the title in there to see what our holdings are. But if I'm after articles within newspapers and magazines, I'm going to click on the articles option and then click search. So again, that'll firstly search across magazine articles. And the reason it's divided between magazines and newspapers is that firstly, they provide slightly different coverage. Magazines tends to be more in depth, but newspapers tend to cover many, many more stories. I'll cover a lot of things that were only famous for one day. So the first results I'll get will be from journals, but then just scrolling down 
the left-hand side of the page, sorry, the right-hand side of the page, I can change resource type to news articles and that'll immediately redo this search across newspapers. And those options on the right-hand side are really handy for further narrowing your search down. So I'm getting a few things there that are probably gonna be pretty relevant. But the other thing I might want to do is I might want to narrow by date. So as I said, I thought it was about 15 or 20 years ago. I can't remember the exact date, but I know it was before 2005. So why don't I just refine it to articles published uh, 2005 or before? So that's uh, reduced my results a bit and made it a little bit more accurate, but then I might want to just pick particular publications. So it's searching across a whole range of um, newspapers from all over uh, the world. So what I want to do is to narrow it down just to Australian newspapers and particularly Melbourne newspapers. So it's not going to be in the Boston Daily Globe or the Calgary Herald, I don't think. In fact, I'm pretty sure it won't be, but it will probably be in the Herald Sun which is a Melbourne paper. It'll probably be in the age as a Melbourne paper and possibly the Australian as a national newspaper. So I'll apply those filters. So pretty easily we've managed to narrow our search down quite a bit and we're getting some pretty accurate results there. All of these about the reopening of the dome uh, reading room at the library. And if I was to pick out one of those, I just click on full text available online. It'll identify which databases that article is available in. So sometimes it'll be multiple databases. I particularly like the ProQuest database, so I'll pick that one out. And what that'll do is, if I hadn't logged in already, it would have asked me at that point to log in with my barcode and my surname. And then it'll take me to this page where I get the full text of the article. So sometimes with these databases, you'll get the full text of the article in plain text as I have here, but you also may get the option of a facsimile of the page from the newspaper. So you can see it exactly as it was published. In this case, I get the full text, but that's fine. I can save it to my computer. I can email it if I'm somewhere else. I can print it out if I want to. So that's how to do a search across our articles and then across our um, databases. But what I might do now is go back and have a look at this news article. So once I'm in the catalog, I can, I can go to news articles and that'll be specifically for newspapers, obviously. And we've got these featured newspapers. So I can narrow it down to major daily Australian papers, Sunday newspapers, regional newspapers, or UK or North American newspapers. And it gives me a bit of a window there on what that actually covers. So if I go for North America, I can see most of them are they're really major papers in the US, but most of them are around about the 1980 period onwards, except for the New York Times, which goes back a fair bit further. But say I want to do a search for Australia's victory in the America's Cup all those years ago. I can just put in a few keywords. I remember John Bertrand was involved, so that'll do for starters. And I just want to get an American perspective on that. So I'll do that search. And again, I know it was sometime in the first half of the 1980s. So again, I might choose to narrow it to, whoops, I was a bit too quick on the draw there. Let's just wait for that to come up. So I've taken racing out. Let's just get rid of that. So um, that was actually an inadvertent example of how you eliminate something from your search. Um, let's now go down and go to date. This is what I wanted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 1984, say I could find out exactly when it was, but that is pretty close to when it was, I think. I think it was probably 1983. So here we are. We're getting articles from various American newspapers around the America's Cup about different races in it. I'm talking about being able to seize the chance to win. Um, so these are quite a good range of articles and uh, quite uh, interesting articles. And there's one about Australia actually taking the America's Cup. So let's click on the full text and see how that comes up. Again, it'll be fairly similar. It's offering me the different databases and it's two ProQuest databases. So I can pick either one of those. And when it comes up, it displays slightly differently in that it comes up with an abstract and with the details of the article. I can then just click on full text, get the plain text of the article. I, and that's got the plain text, but this one also offers me a page view. So a facsimile of the front page of the paper or whatever page it happened to be on. In this case, it was the front page. So there I can see the article as it appeared in the newspaper. So that's having a look at our newspaper databases from a slightly different angle where you can search across a wide range of newspapers or magazines in one hit. The other thing that is helpful is just under these three dots right at the top of the screen. If I click that, it opens a, a number of different options for me, including research guides, 
Uh, these are also available from the front page of the website under our search and discover link, but I'll go from here. We have about 75 research guides to take you through to a wide range of different topics. And what they do is they identify the best resources for that topic. It doesn't have to be our resource, it's just wherever that best resource is. And then it offers you ways of getting the best out of those resources. And we focus mainly on online resources where we can. And alphabetically on the left-hand side, we've got different topics here. So I'm gonna have a look at newspaper guides. So I can try this one, how to find items in newspapers or how to find newspapers. When you go into the guide, there's a series of tabs across the top, which are fairly self-explanatory. And each one of those will explain the different aspects of finding advertisements or finding images. And the other one here is about how to find actual newspapers. So if you're interested in Victorian newspapers or the rest of Australia, and that'll be both newspapers that we have access to online or we have access to in print or where some other organization or database may have access to those papers. So that's our newspapers and magazines. Now we might have a look and see what sort of questions we have had. Let's just bring that up and see what has come through. Okay, so I think I've got one here for you, Rebecca, which is someone who's interested in any recommendations on magazines on animals. Yes, certainly, Andrew, I can have a look into that for you. Um, I'm certain that look, that will be the case. Um, right, so I'm still actually in press reader here, which is what I was looking at earlier. So I showed, uh, if we go back to publications, and right up the top here, as it happens, animals and pets. So I'll just click on that and we'll see what we've got there. You can see, and um, oh, this looks interesting, chickens. Chickens are coming back, I believe, into people's um, suburban um, back gardens. So this is seeing all about chickens, health and wellness. And this sounds very enticing, 17 tips for active bird brains. So um, <laughs> that sounds really fascinating. So yeah, that's just one example, but there's, yeah, there's tons of magazines. It looks like they're on animals and lots of other subjects there too. And um, I'll hand back over to Andrew to see if there's any more questions appearing. Okay, thanks very much, Rebecca. There's a fantastic selection there for people to have a look at. Now, Caitlin, we've got a question come in from you from a, a family historian who's doing a bit of family history on uh, their family, which is of Irish origin. And they're just wondering what Irish newspapers we might have available. Oh, absolutely. So I'm going to take you back to our A to Z database page. Uh, and we are going to do again that filter for historic newspapers. And we're going to do a little uh, keyword search for Ireland. And here we go. So we've got the Irish newspaper archive. And we've got the Irish Times and Weekly Irish Times. And in fact, I'm just going to try that search again with Irish to see, oh yeah, there we go. Sometimes you should try a few different keywords to see if you're not accidentally excluding something. So here we also have 17th and 18th century Bernie newspapers collection, um, which does include some Irish papers. Um, so all of those, you can see different um, coverage years, um, all the way back to 1738 for that one. That's pretty great. So yeah, you should be able to do quite a lot of good family history research there. Excellent. That's fantastic. And I think it probably just bring home, brings home the range of newspapers and magazines that we have. It really is quite an extensive range. And we really do recommend that uh, anybody from Victoria becomes a member of our library. And as I say, if you're not from Victoria, you can always join the National Library or your local state library. Now, there's one final question, which I'll pick up, which is really just asking about that search I did across various databases. Does that include Trove? And the answer for that is no, it doesn't. In fact, it searches across the various databases that we subscribe to. So they're commercial databases. Um, so it doesn't search Trove, but often uh, it's better to search um, Trove individually, I think. I think sometimes you can get too much information and be trying to search across too many things. So um, I think I'd do two searches, one across our commercial databases, depending on what they cover, um, but and then another across Trove. And the other thing with Trove is that our commercial databases of Australian newspapers tend to be papers published over the last 20 or sometimes up to 30 years, but back to the early 90s. Uh, whereas Trove, as Caitlin pointed out, covers 
extensively that period up to nine, the start of 1955 when copyright comes in. So they're two different types of searches you'd be doing anyway. Okay, so I think we haven't got any more questions there at the moment. So what we might do now is to say, um, log in, have an explore, have a bit of fun. It's not all about research. It can be about reading Vogue or reading about uh, animals or reading a wide range of magazines in full colour just when they come out or just seeing what the news is like, how it's been reported around the world. Or as I say, you can do a wide, incredible amount of research through newspapers and magazines. So we really encourage you to do that. The other thing that I should point out just before we go is to indicate that on our website, we do have a Ask a Librarian option. So right down the bottom, if you scroll all the way down, and as we're going down, I'll just point out that under Our Stories, you can look at a whole range of videos, including previous videos in this Our Online Collection series. Just click the View All Stories. But if you get right down the very, very bottom, you'll get to Ask a Librarian. And that's an option for you to ask us reference questions. It doesn't matter what it is. We will try and help you with that. We've got librarians that are working on those and we'll give you any assistance they can and we'll probably put you onto the best resources. Okay, well, on that note, thanks very much to Caitlin and Rebecca and uh, we'll sign off for now. Thank you, bye-bye.